Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Sand Meat Market Sam Brule Show, where we cover everything on the court with the Chucky Doak Black Knights basketball team. As always, I'm joined here with head coach Sam Brule's coach. How are we doing this evening? Doing good. Ready for GP. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you are now. You've got them coming in here on Saturday night for the regional tournament. Good news is you're hosting this year. That's always a good thing. Oh, yeah. Very good. Good news. You know, trying to go down there to GP, they seem to shoot so much better. Not saying they won't when they come here, but mm -hmm. it's nice to have it at home. And to get that home game, you had to beat West Green in the semifinals of the district tournament, too. I think we previewed that the last time we were here. But two weeks ago when we sat down last, I don't think we knew who you were playing yet because you were that one seed that had to wait to see who you would play out of the 4-5 game. Yeah. West Green ended up knocking off Happy Valley in a great shooting performance by then. And then they came into your game, had a great defensive plan that held Christian only two at halftime and held you to, I think, 21 total at halftime. But in the second half, your offense started gaining a rhythm. Christian started getting back to where he's used to, scored 17 in the second half, and you were able to come out with a double-digit win. How good did that win feel over West Green to put you in the district oh, championship? Yeah, our third in the rows. It, it felt great. I mean, Christian got in foul trouble, too. He had set out. He had two fouls in that first half. And you're right, their defense, you know, had a lot to do with it, too. But other players responded. I thought, you know, Luke had a good game. Uh, Nicholas come in, Palazzo on top of that press mm -hmm. and turned them over, helped Turned West Green over. That kind of that second half helped us build that lead. And of course, got Christian going. And of course, Isaiah, you know, he's just. He had a great first half. Yes. Great first quarter. I think he, he kept scored us, eight straight. Yeah. He kept us in it in that first quarter. We would have been down. And, you know, I think it was what, 21 18. 21 18 because it was a one point game and they had a chance to take the lead. And I think, like you said, Nicholas came in at the top of that press forced a back tip turnover that allowed yeah. Samuel to get a layup right before halftime to put you up by three. And that was a crucial moment too, that layup right before the half. You know, Samuel Rules, anybody play with more passion and energy as he does. He he just has it every night. I mean, you know, trying to get that out of everyone is tough, but you don't Samuel, he comes ready to play and you know, he's that spark that we need. Mm -hmm. You know, that six man that every team needs and him and Nick, you know, give it to us that game and really helped. It opened it up. I think Luke hit a big three, too, mm -hmm. that extended their defense. And then it was one on one with Christian at the post. And I thought he took over in the fourth quarter, too. And, you know, our other guards played well that night, too. Defensively, see, people forget we held Brock. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know if he had more than two that night. I mean, her defense was really tough on him. And 23, you know, we put Brock Rush on 23, the McKamey kid mm -hmm. that's hit all the threes. And, you know, if, if he had double figures, it would surprise me because I thought we really did a good job of getting them off that three-point line. And don't get me wrong, they still hit some threes. They're, they're shooting the ball really well. But I thought defensively, you know, and then bracing on Campbell and Samuel and Campbell, I thought was the difference in that game. It was a great defensive game against West Green on both sides because they held you to that low margin the first and you were able to break it out. And then it kind of flip-flopped where you were the team that was bringing a great defensive plan out there that was holding them to low numbers on offense. I think they only scored – off the top of my head, I can't remember, but I'm thinking maybe only 36 the whole game and maybe 18 in both halves. And when you hold a team to only 18 in both halves, odds are you're going to have a really good shot at winning the game holding them to less than 40 points on offense in a boys' basketball game. There was a time going into that fourth quarter where they'd only scored eight. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it was four minutes to go or something like that. And, you know, the third quarter, I'm not sure exactly what we held them to, but that was as good as we've played defensively. And, you know, it was a turning point in that game. And then you win that game, and that throws you into the championship game for the third straight year. And for the third straight year, it was against South Green. So I'm going to say it again, for the third straight year, <laughs> Green County was destined to have a district championship between you or South Green. Ended up being South Green again this year. They ended up putting you on the losing side of that. But take me through that game. It was another wild and competitive game, like all of your games have seemed to be over the last three years. Just take me through that whole entire night in the district title game. You know, we, we jumped out. You know, I thought Isaiah had a great first half. You know, overall, it, you know, if we'd have made some easier shot, we had a lot of shots that we normally make that kind of roll out on us. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I think at one time we were up 14. We could have been up 22 to 24 at that time. And, you know, it's just part of it. You know, playing in a championship game, kids, they're emotionally, you know, a lot of them spent, nervous, all that. But, you know, overall first half, we couldn't play much better. You know, to start with. One of the things that I thought of later was that you didn't have school on Tuesday either. Did that? Do you think that might have affected them in here? Did it worry you coming into the game that there was no school and it's kind of hard to get players up, get them running, get their motor running, get them energized on a day where they don't have school? Well, the worst part about it, people, it's not that we just didn't have school on that Tuesday. We didn't have school on that Monday, Monday either, or yeah. the Friday, Friday before, and it was such a long layoff and. You don't know if that has anything to do with it. I mean, we still had our shooter at We got up, you know, walked through our stuff from 11 to 12 that day. So you're not sure if that had anything to do with it. But the biggest thing, we'd been off for a week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's rough too as far as not getting to play. But I, I thought we still come out. And I thought third quarter, we had a pretty good third quarter, you know, until, what, five minutes ago in the fourth quarter. But at the same time, we got in foul trouble. Brayson picked up his fourth. You know, Isaiah got four, his fourth. You know, Luke ended up getting fourth. So with the loss to South Green too, you still get that home regional game that we talked about at the beginning because you were able to beat West Green and all you had to do was get to that regional championship. Instead of getting the four seed in that opposite, you get the three seed now in Gatlinburg-Pittman. Um, the good news is those seniors get one last game at home. That was one thing that I think every team wants is to host that first round of the regional tournament or to get that sub-state game because then you get to play at home and those seniors get to have those final opportunities to play at home because senior night is never truly the end to their time on their home court because you still have those opportunities. But when you get to the regional tournament like this and you get that last game, the opportunities are, the opportunities are slim to where they only get a maximum of two more attempts to play at home. So how big is it for those seniors to get one last game here at home? Oh, it's huge. You know, that student section has been, you know, so uplifting to this team. I mean, you know, they've really caused other teams problems, and hopefully they'll bring it again Saturday night. They've done a good job this year, you know, how they, you know, responded to our games. And, you know, a lot of those are seniors, too, that's close to our 10 seniors. And, you know, something about this group, they've won three championships. Mm -hmm and finished, you know, two runner-ups. So, you know, that's special. I mean, you know, to be in that many, you know, times in their career, you know, I'll miss this bunch. It's a special accomplishment for them, and they've. it's one of those special groups where you have so many that have played with each other throughout their whole time from early elementary school all the way into the end of high school, too. That's got to be something special. To see their growth, not only as a team, but their growth as boys all the way up to when they're young men. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You know, it. You know, of course, you know, that group's been together since second, probably even before then, second grade when they was in Pee Wees. And I know Nicole Riddle, she's done a lot for that group, you know, through the years. And, you know, she means a lot to them too. And she means a lot to this program. It means a lot to me and, you know, her son graduating, you know, it's just, you're right. It, it's sad, but at the same time, they're becoming young men, and you know that they're going to go out there. I mean, almost every one of those kids, well, every one of them, you know, are good kids. And, you know, they're going to make something special. Good news is their season's not over yet. Oh, no. They've still got an opportunity to extend it and, even further now. And they believe they can mm -hmm. win Saturday. And I think you know, a lot of people do too, including myself. It's a very winnable game against Gallenberg Pittman. You know, you know they got Glasper, who, you know, Mr. Basketball candidate. And got colleges looking at him, you know, and of course, or, you know, can play anything really. You know, such a great athlete. You know, the Whaley kid, another football player, mm -hmm. can, you know, very good basketball player too. But, you know, it's not that it's just two of them, but. You know, we know that we've got to, you know, kind of limit those three. And, you know, there are other role players. How well will they shoot in our gym compared, you know. You know, role players usually play better at home than they do on the road. So we're hoping for that.
because if we can kind of slow down Glasper and or we know that you know we'll have that opportunity to maybe pull that thing out. I don't think you've played Gallimer Pittman any recently in the last few years. It's been mainly South Green that's gotten caught up with yeah, them, and it's been Alcoa on your side. We always get Alcoa, so you know we're hoping that we can get by Pittman and go to Alcoa. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they finished their season, but of course they finished everybody's season last year too, as they were the Winning state, state champions. champions. So, you know, we know that we we've got a good opportunity here, and who knows what Hampton might do. Mm -hmm. That's another wild card that we haven't talked about with West Green beating Hampton. That throws Hampton into the four seed where they go to Alcoa, the winner of that opposite district. And I don't know the last time that you've had two defending state champions playing each other in the playoffs, not only just in the playoffs, but in the first round of the first elimination games. That's crazy to say because you don't have a lot of state champions that jump from one class to the other, and it's rare that when they do, they get paired up with another defending state champion in their first elimination round. I know I I don't I can't recall a time. I was trying to think Greenville when they went from two A to three A or yeah from two A to three A as state back to back state champs, and I can't remember who they played during that run. But you know I'm sure it's been done before. But you know you're right one A and two A meets for all the marbles because one of them's got to go home. One of them's got to go home. <laughs> You're going to have a defending state champion knocked out in the first round of the regional tournament. And it's like I've said all year, and I'm not afraid to say it again, I think this regional tournament is the most exciting thing out of all of them because the other regions that we cover aren't as fun as this region. You've got oh, no. three Mr. Basketball candidates in that opposite district alone with Christian Derry being on that watch list, being an all-state player last year, potentially being an all-state player again this year along with those three. So – You've got four All-State players that are going to be in this regional tournament alone, and the defending state champions in 1A is a four seed in this region tournament too. Like, there's so many fun storylines, narratives, and scenarios that go into this regional tournament, and it's going to be a wild ride. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to see one or two upsets one bit. You know, people don't realize how much – I believe 2A may be the toughest right now of any of the other, you know, definitely 1A. Mm -hmm. You know, 3A and 4A, I mean, there's nothing any tougher right now than 2A's region. And I've seen people on X and other social media sites that say that they think that 1 through 3 and possibly 1 through 4 can sweep this side of the district. But, I mean, being in Greene County, I'll be biased. I don't think that's the case. I think you have the opportunity to knock off GP. I think Hampton has the outside opportunity to knock off Alcoa. And the way West Green's been playing, beating Hampton, anything's <laughs> possible there. And you assume South Green to beat Eagleton. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun regional tournament, no doubt. But I know you host Gatlinburg-Pittman on Saturday night here at 7 o'clock in the first round. But I think that's all we've got this week. I don't think I have anything else left for you unless there's anything you want to add. No, I'm just glad I've made it through it. <laughs> But that's all we've got today, Coach. Thank you once again for <laughs> sitting you. down with me. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Sand Meat Market Sand Roll Show. Look forward to seeing you all next time here on Grassroots Media.